Your return is most timely. Of their own accord, my thoughts had turned to your task and the progress thereof. I confess, my imaginings tended toward the grim and bloody. But you are here now, and I suspect such frivolous wonderings do little justice to the reality of your travails. Tell me, what did you learn of Iceheart? Indeed, and this transpired at Snowcloak. Of all the highlands, that towering wall has borne the worst of the region's brutal shift in climate. So inhospitable has Snowcloak become that we have still to survey the area in its entirety. Could its frozen heights conceal the heretic's hideaway? Mayhap a more robust reconnaissance effort is in order. Putting such considerations aside for the moment, we still know far too little of this Iceheart. That she is capable of commanding such a band of fanatics bespeaks natural authority, and no small measure of charisma. As much as I would like to fathom this mystery with you, the situation has grown beyond my personal purview. I am bound by duty to inform the Temple Knights and request that they bring this matter to its conclusion. Giving the glowing reports the new commander has garnered thus far, I am certain that they can be relied upon to take appropriate action. Though Iceheart's true identity yet eludes us, you have provided us with a point from which to begin. Sometimes it takes but a single stone to prompt an avalanche. On the matter of the stolen provisions, I have already made arrangements for a second shipment to be sent to Revenant's Toll. I could not well allow such an honorable venture to be undermined by one miserable setback. Comrades, your presence here this day signifies the momentous choice that each of you has made. With your strength now pledged to the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, you are beholden to no single nation. You stand as the vanguard for a united Eorzea. From this moment forth, I declare you crystal braves. Let us mend this fractured realm and face our enemies as one. Whether it be the Beastmen and their primals, or the conflict in Cartano, it is plain that the nations of Eorzea cannot solve the problems which plague the realm. Thus does it fall to some few heroic souls to succeed where they have failed. Come! Take your place at the Scion's side as guardians of Eorzea, and together we shall fight for the freedom of all! For the freedom of all! A rousing speech, Alphano. Or should I say, crystal brave Commander Leverieux? Please, Antecedent. The title is honorary. I shall not be leading the troops into battle, as it were. We are of the same purpose. Let us join hands and do what must be done to save this land. The Scions stand ready. I'm eager to see what the Crystal Braves might accomplish. This shall prove an interesting time indeed for the Scions. Yes, I'm listening. So our worst fears are confirmed. The entire Isle. Such power defies comprehension. Truly? Kryle is alive? Thank the Twelve. 
I see. Pray, inform me if her condition changes. Yes, I shall pass on your words to Arianger. My thanks. I shall contact you anon. When I learned of the loss of the Isle of Val, I dared not hope that my friend had survived. Yet, by some miracle, it would seem she has. She's still to regain consciousness, it is true, but better that than death. Putting this happy news to one side, we must now endeavor to make sense of the readings taken by the survey party. It appears the etheric disturbance which accompanied the Isle's destruction is of a magnitude alarmingly close to that of Ultima. Could the Asians be responsible for this devastation as well? I wonder. Have you heard aught from the Mother Crystal since the battle with the Garleans? Then she speaks to neither one of us. Heidelin's silence portends not but ill, I fear. Louisois, I pray you yet watch over us. Hail to you, Sion. How might we serve you? Commander Levayeur bade you serve us? These are welcome tidings indeed. Given the sensitive nature of the task, I could not rely on one of my own. That which I'm about to tell you, I tell you in the strictest confidence. Some days ago, we received certain documents from an anonymous source. They notified us of the presence of a Garlean agent within the ranks of one of the Grand Companies. Following some discreet inquiries, we identified a suspect among the Immortal Flames, whom we detained for questioning. Alas, the man was not our agent. He was but one of many men in the agent's employ. We pressed the traitor for a name, but he had none to give. He claims never to have met his master, whom he knows only as the Ivy. He was, however, certain that this Ivy had coiled itself around every part of the Immortal Flames, it would seem our quarry joined the company some time ago, and gradually recruited others to his cause. These conspirators are the vines by which he learns our secrets, all without exposing himself. 
It won't be easy to identify the ivy amidst this tangled mass of subterfuge. But we have a tendril in our hands, and we shall follow it all the way to the gnarled root. Now, much as I would prefer to proceed with due discretion, circumstances demand that this matter be settled post-haste. Garlemald's war of succession nears its end, and it is feared that the Empire will soon resume its march on Eorzea. When it does, we can ill afford to have traitors in our midst. The ivy must be rooted out now. We must begin by apprising General Roban of our findings. I would ask that you accompany me to the Hall of Flames and remain on hand to see that things go smoothly. Assuming the Ivy's tendrils are as widespread as we believe, he will be aware that an investigation is underway. And if that is the case, he may well move against us. We must be prepared for anything while taking care not to betray our purposes by seeming prepared. A simple enough task for a one-woman army like you. Well, well. What brings you here, my friend? She is here at my behest. Greetings, Roban. It has been a while. Hilbert, you old scoundrel. When they told me you'd be visiting, I scarce believed my ears. But look at you! The honored captain of the Crystal Bloody Braves. Who'd have imagined, eh? Not many. But fewer still would have imagined your destiny lay in politics, old friend. Aye, we've both come far, have we not? Lest you wonder, Hilbert and I go back a long way. We've been friends and rivals since we were lads. The last time we saw each other, Alamigo had just fallen. So you can guess how many summers it's been. And in all that time, not a word from the fool! Ah, well, my dealings tended toward the modest and mundane, unlike some I could mention. As I hear it, no sooner did you reach Thanalan than the brass blades clapped you in irons and dragged you off to die on the blood sands. Being a stubborn sort, you won a thousand matches and earned yourself a place in the people's hearts while you were about it. Then, with your mountain of prize money, you bought the Colosseum and secured a seat on the Syndicate. Those balls, brother! Rags to riches does not do it justice. You're a hero to the common man! Pa, spare me. I am no hero. If anyone is worthy of that title, it's our friend here. Next to her, I'm little more than a glorified butcher. But you, Wilbert, you sell yourself short. By all accounts, you are an adventurer of some standing. I like to think that I did my part for the greater good. But if you're no hero, then I'm no adventurer, not in this company. Anyway... I have tidings. So there has been progress. I've let it be known that this meeting is a reunion between old friends. None will give your visit a second thought. To convene elsewhere would only attract attention. Let us speak here, in plain view of all. So it is we who have been compromised. Taleji Adeleji's machinations have shaken Uldar to her foundations. 
In such uncertain times, a man's loyalty may be bought for a fistful of kill. But if this snake has truly been in our midst for as long as you say, we must needs consider a far graver possibility. Conspiracy. Could it be that the Monitorists have been in league with the Empire from the first? Very well. I will have my most trusted men investigate the matter. Continue your inquiries in the meantime. It does me well to see you again, old friend. When next we meet, let it be over a flagon of ale. I look forward to it. Let us reminisce of bygone days, and drink to the future of our homeland. Flame General. You wear the mantle well, old friend. I must work hard if I'm to keep up. Well, it would seem your services were not required after all. I dare say we have Roban's prudence to thank for that. Still, I was glad of your presence. My thanks, Sion.
Have faith, my friend. You need only state your case with confidence and clarity. Commander Leveilleur, it is both an honor and a pleasure to meet you. I am Emmerich, Lord Commander of the Temple Knights. Alfino Leveilleur, at your service. Your reputation precedes you, Sir Emmerich. I think we will find that we have much in common. Speaking of reputations, yours towers over us all. Does it not? It does indeed, Lord Commander. I am not too proud to admit that I have followed your activities with an interest bordering on fascination. Full glad was I to learn that you would be joining us. Now then, shall we begin? We know full well that the Garleans will return in force ere long. What is more, we have yet to achieve a lasting victory over the Primal Menace. The Beast Tribes continue to summon their gods, and each incarnation is stronger than the last. Ishgard is not immune to these threats. I must reiterate that it would behoove your nation to rejoin the Aorzean Alliance. Once again, I must respectfully disagree. On what grounds? Despite their presence in Kerthus, the Ixil do not concern us. The territorial claims pertain to Gridanian lands, and it is the people of Gridania whom they harry. Consequently, the Holy See judges this to be a Gridanian affair, and Ishgard does not intervene in the internal affairs of other nations. Even were that not the case, our forces are wholly committed to the Dravanian conflict. We have not the knights to spare. As for the Garleans, we are not ignorant of history. We have observed the rise and expansion of the Empire, and we agree that it is only a matter of time before they resume their campaign in Eorzea. Then surely it would be in our best interests to present a united front. Mayhap one day, but not yet. Gaius van Belsar is dead, and the legion of conscripts he left behind lacks the will to fight. We think it highly unlikely that they will emerge from behind the walls of their castra for some time. Forgive me, but if Ishgard's position has not changed, why did you agree to this meeting? It was not only as a representative of Ishgard that I came here. Pardon? It is not within my power to change Ishgardian policy, regardless of my personal feelings. There is, however, one area in which I may exert a measure of influence. Concerns have been raised over the supplies House Fortin has offered to Revenant's Toll. These have led to calls for restrictions on the provision of aid to foreign powers. I can ensure that the shipments continue unabated. Sir Emmerich, we would be in your debt. No, you would not. For I require something in exchange. Of late, there has been a flurry of Dravanian activity, the purpose of which was not immediately clear. However, our astrologians have since observed alarming changes in the heavens. The dragon star waxes unnaturally bright, and there are whispers that it portends the resurrection of Midgard Sorma. The 
fallen guardian of Silvertear Falls? That's absurd. Full many times have I gazed upon the dragon's corpse still wound around the Agrius, and wondered how different our world might be if it yet lived to plague the skies. I do not know, and I do not wish to know, nor does any son of Ishgard. Yet the mere presence of Dravanian forces is not sufficient grounds to send knights to Mordona, whatever our astrologians say. As I told you before, we have not the forces to spare. But we do. So you will intervene on our behalf if we agree to watch over the Keeper of the Lake. Do you accept these terms? I do. I will see that you are kept abreast of any developments. I regret that we could not come to a similar agreement on other matters, but I understand that you are not at liberty to make such decisions. Nevertheless, I hope that what we have accomplished here today will serve to demonstrate to your countrymen that we can work together towards a common goal. Mayhap one day we shall look back on this moment as the first step towards a united Eorzea. Mayhap we shall, Commander. What is the meaning of this? The caravan, my lord. It's been attacked. It was Iceheart, my lord. What? By the fury! All our precautions were for naught?
The tales do not do you justice, warrior of light. Yes, I know who you are, and you know who I am. I was given the name Izel, but I earned the name Iceheart. This endless cycle of hatred, of bloodshed, of sorrow. You would see it continue, O oh noble warrior of light. I would not. I will not. I will bring an end to this war between dragon and man, no matter the cost. In time, you will come to understand that what we do, we do for the greater good. For Eorzea. For Hydaelyn.
Change has come to the Garlean Empire, and we must discuss the implications. The rumours are true, then? The War of Succession is ended. It is. A new Emperor reigns in Garlemald. Who? The birth and all too rapid expansion of the Garlean Empire is commonly attributed to the strategic brilliance of Solus Zosgalvis, yet he did not rule alone. Several members of the royal household also distinguished themselves during his reign. Nevertheless, it was the eldest son who stood to inherit the throne, until his most untimely passing. I thought us fortunate when I learned that the Emperor had died without naming a successor. Would that the Garlean Empire had died with him. It was the grandson and his uncle who had the strongest claims, was it not? Indeed. Yet claims count for little without the power to assert them. High Legatus Varus Ye Galvis is a respected military leader. Not so his uncle. So, young Varus has torn the crown from his uncle's grasp and taken his place at the head of the Empire. Given the troubled nature of his succession, the new Emperor will require time to seal his grip on power. Yet have no doubt but that he shall, for there are none left with strength enough to oppose him. Since the success of Operation Archon, the remnants of the 14th Legion and the forces occupying Alamigo have done naught but fortify their positions. But you can be sure they'll be ready to march on us again, if their Emperor gives the word. When, not if. They say this Varus was so set upon Eorzean annexation that he spoke out against the Meteor Project. Plainly, the new Emperor's intentions are of great concern to us all. I propose that we set aside the Cardinal dispute for the present and discuss what measures the Alliance might take to prepare for a resumption of hostilities with Garlemald. Moreover, I move that we re-examine the question of how our former allies in Ishgard might be persuaded to retake their place at our side. Could Eorzea but stand as one, twould deal a grave blow to our enemy's ambitions. Well, I suppose we should be grateful that they have finally acknowledged the inevitability of Imperial attack. Who knows? 
They may even do something about it. If only the leaders of Ishgard would follow their example and stop hiding behind their gates, praying for the coming storm to pass them by. But that is a discussion for another time. At present, I am more concerned by the fact that the Alliance's mooted preparations will be made known to the Garleans many moons before their coming. So long as the ivy eludes our grasp, no secret is safe. <laughs>